Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surbhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 28th of November. Light rains, favorable wind speed improve air quality in Indian capital. Newly elected Sri Lankan president arrives in India on first state visit. And Pakistan's top court grants conditional extension to Army Chief Bajwa. And now for all the details. Light rains and favorable wind speed in New Delhi on Thursday morning further improved air quality in the Indian capital. The air quality which reached hazardous in the past weeks was recorded in moderate and satisfactory categories in some parts after change in weather patterns. Residents in New Delhi breathed a sigh of relief as the air quality in the Indian capital improved significantly on Thursday due to light rains and favorable wind speed. The weather department forecast a generally cloudy sky and the maximum and minimum temperatures likely to be settled at 25 and 16 degrees Celsius respectively. While most of the monitoring stations in Delhi recorded air quality index or AQI in the moderate category, particulate matter or PM2.5 was recorded at 89 in Lodi Road area at 6.40 am, while PM10 stood at 98, which fall in satisfactory category. In the past few weeks, the air quality in New Delhi hovered between severe category with AQI between 401 to 500 and also severe plus category with AQI above 500. During winter season each year, most of the northern India suffers from a spike in toxicity in the air due to change in weather patterns and crop residue burning by farmers. A dip in temperature along with low wind speed also tends to trap air pollutants closer to the ground. Newly elected Sri Lankan President Gotabe Rajapaksa arrived in Indian capital New Delhi on Thursday evening, his first foreign visit since he took charge this month. A ceremonial reception will be held at the Indian Presidential Palace in his honour on Friday. He will later hold talks with the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi to deepen strategic bilateral ties. Modi had telephoned Rajapaksa to congratulate him on his electoral win and invited him to visit India as his first official foreign tour. They are expected to discuss issues of mutual interest, including stability in the Indian Ocean region and ways to boost economic cooperation. It is from Pakistan. Pakistan's Supreme Court on Thursday granted a six-month conditional extension to Army Chief General Kamar Javid Bajwa's tenure. The court announced its verdict after being assured by the government that it would legislate on the army chief's appointment and remuneration within six months. Pakistan's Supreme Court has granted a six-month conditional extension to Chief of Army Staff General Kamar Javed Bajwa's tenure after being assured by the government that it would legislate on the army chief's appointment and remuneration within six months. The Apex Court in a short order on Thursday announced the verdict after hearing a petition challenging the extension of the Army Chief's tenure. The top court's ruling came as General Bajwa was set to retire at midnight on Thursday. Prime Minister Imran Khan had extended Bajwa's tenure for another three years through a notification in August, but the top court suspended it on November 26 due to irregularities in the manner of extension. During Bajwa's tenure, the military has been accused by opposition politicians of electoral manipulation to bring Prime Minister Imran Khan to power. The military, which has ruled Pakistan for nearly half of its 72-year history, has denied interfering in politics. More news from Pakistan. 
Pakistan has appointed Asim Salim Bajwa, the former head of its military's media wing, as the first chairman of the newly established China-Pakistan Economic Corridor Authority. The basic aim of forming the authority is to assure timely completion of the CPEC projects. Pakistan government earlier this week appointed retired Lieutenant General Asim Salim Bajwa, the former head of its military media wing Inter-Services Public Relations, as the first chairman of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor or CPEC Authority. Bajwa will head the CPEC Authority, responsible for monitoring, evaluating and implementation of the project-related activities, reports suggest. The CPEC Authority was established by the government through an ordinance in October before Prime Minister Imran Khan's visit to Beijing. The basic aim of forming the authority is to ensure timely completion of the CPEC projects. Meanwhile, opposition parties including the Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz have already rejected the CPEC authority, terming it a violation of recommendations of the parliamentary committee concerned. The multi-billion dollar CPEC is a planned network of roads, railways and energy project linking China with Gwadar port of southern Balochistan province which Baloch people claim was illegally occupied by Pakistan decades ago. Baloch activists have long been fighting against the forceful occupation of Pakistan and accused that projects under CPEC are an exploitation of their resources. Top US General Mark Milley has said the chances of a successful outcome from peace talks on ending the 18-year-long war in Afghanistan are higher than before and could happen in the near term. His remarks came days after Taliban released American and Australian university professors held hostage for more than three years, raising hopes for a revival of peace talks. The chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley, has said the chances of a successful outcome from peace talks to end the Afghan war is higher than before and could happen in the near term. General Milley, who arrived in Afghanistan on Wednesday while talking to reporters, also said that no decisions had been made on troop reductions from the country. But there are several options. Earlier this month, the Taliban released American and Australian university professors held hostage for more than three years, raising hopes for revival of peace talks. The U.S. Taliban talks had collapsed in September after President Donald Trump called off dialogue post-Taliban suicide bombing in Kabul, killed a U.S. soldier and 11 other people. The chances of successful peace talks are only complicated by the Taliban's refusal to engage with what they call an illegitimate U.S.-backed government in Kabul. The Afghan government is now reportedly working on a list of delegates for an intra-Afghan dialogue to be held in China. The Indian Women's Association in Nepal has donated two electric vehicles to Pashupati Area Development Trust as a goodwill gesture. The vehicles will help in movement of pilgrims to the Holy Pashupati Nath Temple and listed as UNESCO's World Heritage Site. Indian Women's Association or IWA in Nepal on Wednesday donated two electric vehicles to Pashupati Area Development Trust, which oversees conservation and other operations at the iconic Pashupati Nath Temple and the adjoining area. IWA President Namrita Puri said the eco-friendly vehicles will be helpful for the pilgrims visiting the Holy Pashupati Nath Temple, especially for the elderly and the differently abled people. Indian Women's Association is an organization under the patronage of Embassy of India. It aims to provide friendly meeting ground for Indian women residents in Nepal. Indian ambassador to Nepal Manjeev Singh Puri was also present on the occasion. The pilgrims from all over the world come not only from India and Nepal and is the holiest of holiest shrines for Hindus. So we just imagine there are people who are coming who are infirm, who are, are not well, they are handicapped, differently abled, young women and children. So this will aid them in making movement in the complex easy. The Indian mission in Nepal in a release said that handing over of e-vehicles will be another milestone in strengthening cultural and religious ties between people of India and Nepal and bringing people of the two countries closer. The 14th edition of the Tibetan Buddhist Conference on Religion began at the headquarters of the Central Tibetan Administration 
in India's northern hilly city of Dharamsala on Wednesday. The three-day conference is being attended by heads of religious sects of Tibetan Buddhism to deliberate over the question of reincarnation of the 14th Dalai Lama. The 14th edition of the Tibetan Buddhist Conference on Religion began at the headquarters of the Central Tibetan Administration in India's northern hilly city of Dharamsala on Wednesday. Representatives from different schools of Tibetan Buddhism and Bon tradition were present during the opening ceremony of the conference. Members of the Tibetan government in exile, including the head Lopsang Sangye, also attended the ceremony. The three-day conference will focus on the discussion and decision with a particular emphasis on discovery and recognition of the reincarnation of Tibetan spiritual leader Dalai Lama. This is the 14th uh, meeting that is going to happen. So it will usually discuss about the, all the religious matters in the Tibetan communities. And then there is a chance that it will talk about the uh, reincarnation of His Holiness Dalai Lama also because the Chinese uh, side, they have been very insistent about uh, distorting the historical fact and saying that they have all the political and historical power to decide His Holiness, which uh, I think it is not uh, uh, all the distortion of the historical facts. The conference on the first day adopted three resolutions in which resolves have been made for the continuation of the institution of the Dalai Lama and right of the 14th Dalai Lama Tenzin Gyatso to decide on reincarnation. Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, will attend the closing ceremony of the Buddhist conference on November 29. Migratory birds belonging to different species have arrived in parts of India with the onset of winter. The wing visitors have flocked in Indian centuries during winters and settled there until the winter season ends. Several migratory birds have arrived in Nadan Kanpur city of India's Uttar Pradesh province with the onset of winter. The winged visitors at a bird sanctuary in Kanpur Zoo have become an attraction for many visitors. Birds belonging to different species flock in Indian sanctuaries during winters. They make the place as their home and settle there until the winter season ends. <laughs> और इसके लिए हम लोगों ने झील की सफाई करवा रखी थी झील में प्रॉपर्ली मछलियों का कंसंट्रेशन है जिसको कि वो लोग आते हैं घोंगे भी हैं और झील में पानी भी भरा हुआ है इसके कारण हो सकता है कि पक्षियों को कोई परेशानी ना हो हम लोग आए थे चिड़ियाघर घूमने यहां पे जानवर देखने लेकिन यहां पे जैसे पक्षियों का सीजन है तो कुछ साइवेरियन पक्षी भी आए हैं जैसे सुरखाप और कई तरह के बगुले वगैरह Birds from Siberia and Central Asia use wetlands as their transitory camps, which play a vital role in sustaining a large population of the breeding birds. From early November onwards, the migratory birds keep arriving in India till December and return during the spring season. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Light rains, favorable wind speed, improve air quality in Indian capital. Newly elected Sri Lankan president arrives in India on first state visit. And Pakistan's top court grants conditional extension to Army Chief Bajwa. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.